but here I will use a function you can get any function you can use in situ in the system expression it's the expression panel system and you have a lot of expression you can use we've seen uh, already the random in the math uh, category which uh, unless it's in the value category sorry I will use this time the distance function which is in math it calculates the distance between two points so you have here an example of how to use it I will compare the distance between the mouse and other on the each sprite for now I will cancel what I did because I forgot something you can't access the position of the mouse unless you have the mouse plugin so now I've added it I will compare the distance you can type it yourself if you remember how it's uh, the name of the function and uh, now you can use mouse dot x mouse dot y and then the sprite dot x and sprite dot y and you want to to check if the distance is lower or equal to the radius less or equal to radius that's how it works and then you switch the frame to one let's see what it does I'm painting all my sprites red but I want uh, the sprite to turn back black if I uh, if I'm not uh, if they does if they don't if they aren't in this case there are two ways I know either you do this and then you press X or you do add the else you can press X and you can do this then you have this cool kind of lighting effect I will lower the radius 100 and maybe put more objects and here you see kind of cool so yeah and that's one way to do it you can do also something like that here when you read the event it will turn all the sprites to black and then for each sprite that returns true for this condition they will go back to red which is the same as or else as using the else maybe maybe this one is slower but uh, for now in C2 the bottleneck of the of uh, of uh, the of HTML5 in general the bottleneck is often the rendering so uh, it's not something you really have to worry for now to worry worry for now but uh, I would use uh, the else uh, if I was worried about it and I would use this technique if I just was a uh, free um, freestyling uh, prototyping uh, my uh, my game and uh, wanted to go fast so now one question you could have is why um, can't we use uh, an object uh, condition and why sh uh, why do we need to use the for each and the distance like that it's just because in the objects uh, ACE we talked about the ACE last time you don't have a compare distance if you had such a uh, condition in the list of, uh, of condition in the object we wouldn't need to use this but here you can compare X compare Y compare height uh, you can compare many things but you can can't compare everything so yeah that's one uh, reason uh, 
run reason you want to use the for each. There's other reason and I will uh, show you that now. So I will first uh, save this example for you to use. Oh, I wanted to show you a little trick you can use with global constant. For now, um, this 0 and 1, I have to remember what they mean. I have to say in my head, okay, uh, the 0 is the black and the 1 is the red. And uh, this program is so uh, short that it's not really a problem at all. But what you can do when you get many values, uh, many numbers like that in your program, you can actually name them. And by using constant, you can do something like that. And then use that directly in your code. One question that can be asked is why making these um, this variable constant why can't I just use a global number and that's all you can the answer is you can you can use a global number and not make it constant but uh, using a constant variable ensure you or anyone working on the same project or yourself in the future you are ensuring that you are using something that never change you know that this black this red when you have 1000 events will always be the same as what you define in the beginning of your uh, of your code and that's very very important when you making a serious project to to have this insurance it's what i like to call the having confidence in your code having confidence in your how uh, there's a little uh, yeah there's an example showing that for instance the firelight in the street when one side is uh, green the other side is uh, is red and that's not even the software that is ensuring that it's how uh, they are wired together that's the hardware underneath the, the the shell of the light that ensure you that uh, when one side is green, the other side is red, and that can't be uh, both uh, green. When you see uh, those movies where uh, the hacker are, are uh, changing the the light and uh, putting everything uh, green for accident to happen uh, that actually can't happen in the hardware of the street light and uh, that's uh, the same kind of thing you are ensuring in your code by using constant uh, it can never be changed you don't have access to a, a set value you don't have these I have no none of these three variables are in my uh, uh, set value uh, interface. If I create a non constant value, let's name it uh, FDSQ, which is pretty intelligent. I have them, I have it. Okay, so that's all for constant uh, here, and I will save this in. Uh, my Dropbox. I will share this after the the video. I don't know where I am. C2 class, class, class. Example challenge box. Uh, extra. Okay. So, where, what should I call that? Uh, random sprites. Okay. So basic of, sp of speaking now I will close this project and create a new one I show you um, another situation where you want to use the for each to pick your sprites uh, I will create uh, some coins I will create some coins 
clones is money, money is yellow. Everybody knows that. I will resize my layout so it's nice and tidy. I will create lots of coins. Select money. It's a uh, control click drag to uh, to copy. Here, not too much. Don't want to get greedy. And I want to have coins that have uh, different values. I don't want each coin to have uh, one unit of value or, uh, or something fixed. I want many value, many different values. So I will create this instance variable for my coins object uh, type. I will name that them coin. And what I want to do first is on start of layout, I want to um, set the value at random. Coin set value and I want the value between 10 and 15 and I want um, an integer. So I will run this uh, number to the nearest uh, value. So all my cones will have um, a dif different values. To ensure you that it's the case, I will show you. Uh, I will show the value of each on the text object. Uh, I want the text to be centered vertically, centered horizontally, and the hotspot to be in the middle. So I can place them on top of my uh, my sprite. Obviously I won't do this by hand. What I will use now is something I will cover a bit more in the next lesson. I will use a container. A container, well, you'll see what it does. For now, I will create a container by selecting one object I want to put in the container. Click create and select another object I want to put in the same container. Now you see when I uh, select an object I have the coin and the text in the container. The one who is uh, gray is the one selected. If I select the text, the text is gray and the coin is the in the container. So the container, uh, there's no uh, main uh, holder of the container, uh, so to speak. Uh, it's small, uh, you, ima you imagine you have an invisible uh, container which holds this and this. It's more uh, something, something uh, abstract. But it does something interesting. Uh, when I will start the game, I will create, uh, let me create uh, uh, no, not a text. I will delete this one. Delete. I will create a text box so you won't mix uh, the text box and the and the the text object. I will call it debug just to show debug information. And I will each time I have to do this uh, set it to text area so I can have many lines. I'm not sure I will need this, but. Uh, just uh, as, a, as a habit. So I will show you something. I will count, just count, the number of text. So I will set text to text.count. Let me rename uh, this first. Uh, I will call this label. So uh, debug set text to label.count. Here you have a little uh, bit of a little warning in the text box. You can't put numbers in the text. Uh, you can't set text to a number. You have to convert this to a string. To do this, you use the str function. You can find it here. Uh, it's probably in text uh, str. Where are you? Str value. Value. Okay. You can convert an integer or a float to a string. The invert is uh, these one, are these one. 
Um, okay. So here it works. And you'll see, I have only one text. I have, uh, I don't know how many uh, coins. And if I start the game, 